I want to know what the government is doing about the high gas prices, high diesel prices, high inflation, the food costs, the high electric costs. I want to know what is being done about that. Why is not that nobody is talking all about that kind of stuff that is affecting every American citizen in this country right now? Why is this not being all over the news? Why isn't this in prime time? Outlook, if you want to say, for the um, cost of living and inflation and all that, it's a, over a 40-year high. Uh, hasn't been this high since 1981, which is crushing a lot of Americans out there right now. A lot of people out there are having a very difficult time in choosing what they want to do. I think they should include a jar of petroleum jelly to make it a little easier on the American people when they're being bent over and it's being shoved up their rear ends. Because basically right now, that is what is taking place. We are paying the price. This is your last warning. It's very uh, disconcerting what is going on right now. Um, what we are in for coming soon. We're not really sure exactly when some of this stuff is going to hit, but you it's so imperative for you people to start preparing and being prepared now. You have to understand what is taking place at this point in time in this country, in this world that we all live in, that we call home. American people want to get back to some type of normalcy here. That's, that's what, you know, that's what Americans will turn into and watch. Not that we would believe what we are hearing. If you get what I'm saying, because we all know you take things that you hear from the government with a grain of salt and they're not doing anything about it. And this is why they're not doing anything about it. You know, we're all getting tired of being abused and being treated like we don't matter anymore. It's all about the other countries. It's all about the big businesses, the multi-billionaires and all these people. They're all the ones calling the shots and everything else. And people in Washington are just puppets on strings waiting for their next paycheck from all these type of companies, corporations, and people that like to fund their party. It is getting ugly. It's getting ugly quick. And these people are out to take everything they possibly can take and to try and make sure that, you know what? They don't care. They don't care about me and you. And as soon as everybody starts realizing this, is when people are really going to start wising up and hopefully it's not too damn late and start prepping and being prepared. This is your last warning folks, because they're going to start. This is going to get ugly. Now, if I'm not mistaken, all right, under the previous administration, people, uh, we were pretty much set as far as everything goes, as far as energy dependent, we didn't depend on anybody else for our energy or anything else. We did not rely on other countries for our fuel, gas, or anything else being brought into this country. And we did not have the high energy prices. And we did not have the high food prices either. Under this, basically, this current administration, what is taking place is he did away with all that. So now not only do we have high energy prices, high gas prices, high food prices, high rent, prices and mortgage prices, interest rates on the rise. I choose to believe that sometimes um, certain things are going to be done the way they're going to be done. Whether we like it or we don't. You know, it to me, it doesn't really matter who is sitting in whatever office in the Senate or in the Congress. You know, it's who has the biggest checkbook that is going to really make a difference in their decisions on what they are doing on a daily basis and how they are voting to put our food crisis in high gear come uh, this fall into winter. That's what they're going to blame on climate change. Yes, folks, you know what they're going to do is they're going to turn around and they're going to want to use 
the climate change and try to implement more of the Green New Deal. Now, I know a lot of you may disagree with me, but it's coming, folks. They have a plan and they wanted to execute it. I mean, these people that are out there in left field, folks. I mean, they're out there and they're going to get it through executive orders from the president. You see, if the current administration starts issuing executive orders on food preparation, on what you do, on what you buy, what you spend your money on, uh, where you go, how you do it, how much gas you can buy, um, all these different types of things. You know, we're pretty much screwed, folks. And this is what they really want. They want the gas prices to be where they are now and to keep going up. How about we start controlling and putting a cap into how much these oil companies and can charge and the, they want to try to push people into having to turn to buying electric cars. But the problem is, is that electric cars are out of the, the reach for so many Americans. And even if everybody could afford electric car, let's say they sold them for $15,000 to pop. All right. Where is all these millions of people out there and all these millions of cars, where are you going to plug them into and charge them? You think our grid would actually take that? Our grid would shut down in a heartbeat. We'd all be living in the dark. And hopefully you live on a farm, so you have a horse, so you got something to ride. Or maybe you got that bicycle from when you were a kid. We also have to remember one critical part of this whole scenario. This is your last warning and what we are in for coming really, really soon, folks. The writing's on the wall. Maybe a lot of you out there don't pay attention to the news, but it seems to me as if they want to destroy what we have and then try to rebuild it all over again. It's like reinventing the wheel. Are we out of our minds? Is it, is it just me? Or what do you all think? If you think what's going on right now, and if, if you're not happy about any of the stuff that's going on, as far as I'm sure everybody out there, you're struggling with high food prices, high gas prices, high rents, maybe your mortgage rate went up. It's only going to get worse. And what's going to happen when all these goods and stuff start trying to roll back in here from other countries, especially like China and everything else, since that's where we have to buy all our stuff from. There is ways that we can try to make sure we're buying and stuff in America and try not to buy anything that's from China or Hong Kong or these places. But do we really think that's going to happen now? See, a lot of people believe that, you know, you should buy America. You should buy, um, always shop, you know, small towns, your, your local businesses and all this kind of stuff. And I totally do agree. The point of it is, is this is the monster we have created. The American people thrive on buying all this stuff. They don't care where it's made. They don't care who made it. They don't care if it was made in a sweatshop by some kid making, you know, 30 cents for the day. They don't care about any of that. What they do care about is that's what they want. And that's reality, folks. It's a monster we've created. And now to change the habits of all the American people is basically literally impossible. The only way you could really physically do that is if you turned around and you just didn't allow anything to come into the country, you get whatever we make. We force this country to start making the goods that we need on a daily basis. You know, there's a lot of people that refuse or so they say, they refuse to go like to Walmart or Sam's or any of these kind of places. But in the end, when money is tight, as it is right now with the inflation, a lot of people are making some really tough decisions right now between having to put gas in their cars, food on the table, a roof over their head. I mean, the whole nine yards and it's getting way out of hand. 
and we need to rein all this back in. We need to rein it back in and we need to take control over our own goods, our own services and everything else in this country. We don't need to be outsourcing all this stuff to all these other places, to all these countries. You know, you pick the phone up and you call somebody, you know, if you need help or whatever, you know, the help desk. Well, you know, you're not going to be calling somebody here in America. I mean, forget it. It ain't going to happen. But if you ever did notice, if you do call like places and and you say, I need to speak to somebody in the States that speaks English, you're talking to somebody here in the United States. So why didn't that phone call just go right to somebody here in the United States? Why can't we have call centers here? It puts a really strain on a lot of people to try to, well, let's just say help the little guy because the big guy is buying in massive bulk. and. At this point in time, people have to save every penny that they possibly can. You know, they they have to learn sometimes the hard way. That's sometimes for some people, it's the only way they're going to learn. And then they wake up and smell the roses and they're like, hey, wait a minute here. I ain't doing that again. So I'm pleading with everybody out there because your warnings are running really, really, really. You're getting to the end of them. I want people to be prepared. I want people to be ready. I want people to understand what they need to do. That's why I've done all the videos that I have done. I want people to understand the importance of being able to supply food, water, medical, and everything else that goes along with prepping to their families in a time of need when they really do need it. You see, folks, in the end, it comes down to you being prepared. Because I can tell you right now, you can believe whatever you want to believe. If you think that FEMA truck's going to roll into your neighborhood and set up and start supplying you with everything you need, food and water and a shelter and all this kind of stuff. Well, you all remember Katrina? Do I need to say any more? History repeats itself. And if you're talking something on a global scale that affects the whole country, where do you all really think that's going to go? Do you really think FEMA couldn't handle Katrina in Louisiana? You think they're going to be able to handle the whole country. Think about that, folks. When you mention the word prepper or I'm prepping, this is what a lot of people are scared of because the conception of this country and a prepper, mark my words, is everybody thinks of the TV show, The Doomsday Preppers. Now, I watched that show. It was quite interesting. You know, these people had food put away for God knows how many years, but that's what people think. They, if you tell them you're a prepper, that's the first thing that comes into their mind more than likely is, oh, the doomsday preppers. Yeah, the people are crazy. So right now, folks, I want you to ask yourselves, have you been heeding the warnings? Have you been paying attention? Have you done everything that you possibly could do? Because Your time is running out, and this could be your last warning. 